Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues again today. For the second time, we head back to Marquette, Michigan. That's where Northern Michigan University's Olympic training site has uh, picked up a very talented young man. Andy Besick has been named the uh, uh, the assistant coach there with Rob Herman. We talked with Rob earlier today, and he is gleeful indeed that he gets Coach Andy Besick on his staff. He joins us now in the Nike hot seat. Coach Besick, I like the I like the the sound of that. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Before we get into how all that happened, I gotta first of all congratulate you on your third. Greco-Roman Wrestler of the Year. You've been a spark plug for Greco, uh, a lightning rod, if you will. Uh, numbers of Greco athletes are increasing on a daily basis. Some say that that the uh, Michigan site in, Mar- in Marquette will see over 50 athletes this year, and i got to believe you're pretty excited about that. But uh, congratulations on number three. You're now in pretty rarefied air. Uh, you're standing next to Dennis Hall when it comes to earning three of those honors. How did you, uh, first of all, who told you that you'd received the honor? Um, I think I found out just a few hours before when they called to make sure I was going to be at the evening session that day that I was getting an award. So. I think that's pretty cool. It's voted on, on by coaches and athletes. Does that mean, uh, does that make it even more special for you? Yeah, I think so. Um, I know I you know, hadn't uh, competed much in 2016, but, you know, the, the fact that, um, you know, coaches and fellow athletes still, you know, voted me to that, that award was, is pretty special. You know, I asked uh, Robbie Smith the other day if the power to uh, wrestle in, in his style, the way he does it. Does it come from the socks or does it come from the beard? I'll ask you the same. Does power come from the mustache? I mean, really, it's just got to come from within. Mm-hmm. You so know, you could yeah. shave your whole head right now, today, as Rob Herman suggests you may consider doing, if only for that <laughs> clean-cut look. Would you uh, Would you consider shaving the mustache? Uh, I'm not sure. I... I did shave it like this this last uh holiday over uh christmas but i don't know just for just for a change but i do feel like uh you know I, like it's part of me now i'm more confident with it but ashley likes but, it right um yeah my, my wife she's i don't know she's she's a fan of it sometimes as long as it's not uh too long <laughs> All right, let's get down to business. You are the fifth uh, coach in the program's history there at MU, NMU uh, since it was established in 99. Uh, you've trained there, so this is not your first trip or your first uh, presence there. You, you actually have uh, trained there uh, en route to earning your bachelor's degree in physical geography in 2010. Um, yeah. Talk to us about returning this time as a coach. Um. It's, I think it's uh, nice that this is where I was training and competing out of. Um, with the Yvonne Ivanov as the coach when I was here um, and trying to, you know, do things that he had us doing, trying to replicate that and really um, kind of tr- really try to push these guys more uh, like he was – he was pushing us every day to, to be better, to, you know, fight for our spots. So, you know, and what's interesting is I've always seen you, especially in, in the last couple years, uh, watching you lead team Minnesota at the Fargo nationals, um, you know, assisting at, at Betterman elite wrestling club in Colorado, seeing the effect you've had on the kids, the youngsters in our sport, but I've always seen you as a coach. Is this something you've always wanted to do? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that it's uh, exactly something I've always wanted to do, but uh, at this point, I feel like um, I just really uh, would like to to uh, share, you know, the things I've picked up and learned, and to help lead the next generation of wrestlers. Uh, you know, different mental skills. You know, just 
encouraging them that that they're they're closer than they think and if they can you know really believe that and buy in that they're going to see you know see the, the similar success to I, as I had so the move for from senior level wrestling to coaching may have come to come as a surprise to some but is it's apparently something you've been thinking about for a while right well i've tried to I've tried to always like help anybody that's that's asked even um anybody that in my be in my weight class that i'm training with on a day-to-day basis i'm still gonna you know offer them good insight and try to help them get better and then in, in turn make myself better so i always like trying to to help go over things with with other wrestlers and help them improve yeah we're seeing uh greco-roman grow um, and hopefully we will see the rules change to help uh, put guys in the air again and, um, and, and and compete the way you and I both know the sport should, should be. Um, i got to ask you, because I know the fans are going to want to know, does this mean this, this decision, does it mean you're done competing? Um, you know, right now I'm just, I'm not sure. Definitely had a, a lot going on this last year. We had our... Our third child we moved to, to Michigan, to take this coaching job. So um, I don't I don't know. Maybe uh, we'll have to see see how things go, see how I'm feeling, you know, not just how I'm feeling close to like a big tournament, but how I feel, you know, in the the slower parts of the year. If I would still have motivation and, and desire in kind of the dead time of the the season, you know, then that might tell me that um, the feelings might be more real. Mm. So there's got to be desire. You've got to be anticipating, got to be excited. Um, I mean, working out and, you know, it's a pretty lonely process. The working out part, the, the part where you actually get to compete are brief moments in a career, you know? So it's, it's something I gotta believe you gotta be pretty darn well dedicated to. It's guys like Mason Manville, though, I'm sure give you uh, a minute just to take a pause because, you know, that's the future, and you have a chance to instill in him all that you've learned. Have you been working out with him leading up to the World Championships? Um, no, I haven't um, been like in the same training environment as him for I don't know six seven months uh, when I left. Colorado, um, but this coming uh, coming months, you know, I might be planning to be in Colorado a few times, and like to like to work with him or you know offer him any insight. What are your thoughts on on this particular world team? It seems we're starting to see a nice mixture of the the up and comers and the senior guys, like we mentioned Robbie Smith just moments ago, but what are your thoughts on the makeup of this world team? Um, I'm really excited. Uh, I know a lot of guys, um, have been there, I guess, you know, years ago or like Robbie's been there pretty steady, but Cheney made the team a few years ago and, uh, Ildar as well, but you know, first time for the U S Ben's been on Olympic teams, so they're, you know, they're a little more seasoned, but we still have, you know, new guys, uh, you know, like, like Mason and, uh, Pat Smith that, that also, you know, bring a lot of, a lot of excitement. So I excited to see what, what happens. I like what I see out of Pat Smith and, uh, well, I tell you what, it's exciting and fun to watch. Um, is, in your estimation, at, at about 10, 12 years ago, rules were changed and it kind of slowed down uh, a lot more breaks, if you will, in the action. Um, mm-hmm. In your estimation, what needs to be changed uh, in, in our sport to make it more exciting for the athletes, the coaches, and the fans? Yeah, I mean, it's a tough question, but I think uh, if there could be some way that uh, – you know, you still kept a forced parterre, but not in the ref's hands. Um, something that one of my 
uh, friends was talking about with what we were talking about the rules and they had suggested that you know instead of getting a point for a push out you get to go you're, you're you get to go on top if you push them out okay. so you don't get a guaranteed point but you get an opportunity to work on top and i mean that still uh is going to kind of push the emphasis of head down hips back trying to push each other out um but then you're getting uh you're still having the the parterre where there's um you know been more scoring without having it in the the ref's decision robbie um, smith i keep referring to robbie robbie likes to uh fly people he believes that his opponent should automatically be awarded frequent flyer mileage uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, man. I like to see a guy get thrown on his back or his head. One of the two. It doesn't matter. As long as they're sailing through the air and they're they're wearing a uniform that doesn't have our flag on it, I like to see him go flying. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's definitely exciting and um, grabs everybody's attention that's in the arena. So Yeah, you can hear the people go, ooh. <laughs> uh-huh. It was something special. Well, your career has been something special, Andy. You look at what you've been able to accomplish besides three beautiful kids and a wonderful wife. Uh, you know, I go back to 2010, uh, the Sunkissed Open. Uh, you became the champ there in, in uh, 2010. And then it was on to the Visto Cup in, in Finland. You've traveled the world. Uh, mm-hmm. favorite country to visit as a competitor. Can you, can you tell me what that might be? Uh, I really liked, uh, really liked Cuba. I liked, um, that we'd had a, a training camp in, in Greece before the world championships in 2011 and really enjoyed the time in Greece. It was also, uh, August, so it was warm. Probably those two trips. I like Cuba. Um, what, what What is something about Cuba that people may not know? Because for many of us, it's been a walled-off country. In other words, we were not allowed to travel directly there from the U.S. What would be uh, something that people would be surprised to know about Cuba and its people? Well, I mean, something that uh, surprises me or maybe doesn't surprise me, but it's just such a relief to see there is um, in the U.S., we kind of get – so caught up with having to to have this and that and there these people have very little but they have more happiness than we we do it's because they couldn't be happier with what they have and it's it's really awesome to see that as competitors uh and, and the coaches and competitors are they warm and welcoming yes I, i've found people you know very excited uh, you know, about the sport in Cuba. There's um, been a few times where people have uh, recognized us off the street because they've aired the, the wrestling matches on their, on their television. So it's, it's definitely something that they welcome and enjoy seeing, you know, people from the other countries competing there. Is it Cuba or Cuba? I don't know. <laughs> Is there a championship of yours, uh, a, a tournament of yours that, that you participate in? It doesn't necessarily mean you won the tournament, but is there one that stands out for you uh, over others as the most enjoyable competition of your life? And you've been at the top of the mountain so many times. Is there one that stands out for you more than others? Yeah, I, I think uh, the the Pan Am championships in 2012 that were in Colorado Springs. Um, you know, I was able to win the tournament and, um, good friend Chaz Betts also won the tournament after me. And I think it was during like the 60 kilogram, uh, finals or after they won, they're playing their national anthem and Chaz and I were backstage, uh, and we're just like we we can't be hearing this all night you know <laughs> we're we're both wrestling cuba in the finals and we both won and it was it was awesome it was at the the training center where we had both trained every day you know and uh had a good crowd there for us 
uh, it was really awesome. You mentioned Chaz Betts. There's a lot of good guys in this uh, sport, specifically this discipline uh, of Greco. And uh, I know you and Chaz are pretty close. Who else are you close with? I'm um, close with Robbie, close with Spencer. Um, you know, a lot of guys that were training up here at Northern Michigan when when I was training with, we're, um, you know, made some pretty close bonds and some guys are still involved in the sport and other guys have kind of moved off, but, uh, we try to stay, stay in touch. I tell you what, Rob Herman, as I mentioned earlier, was very excited, uh, to, to talk to us today here at takedown about, uh, your appointment, uh, for 34 years, uh, he's been coaching and, uh, he's about as excited about Greco right now, uh, than he's been in his 34 years. Recently, Gary Mayab uh, has been added to the operational team of the Greco program for Team USA, joining Matt Lindland, joining Rob Herman. And and uh, this, this seems to be, at least for us, and from our point of view, to be a, a move in the right direction. Was it a needed move? Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's really important that that he's uh, on board and doing what he's doing kind of bridges the, all the connections for, you know, the Greco, uh, the Greco team, kind of the different coaches with different ideas kind of can come to him and get a message out from Matt to all of them. So I think uh, start to come together and really be able to, you know, build the program. As much as, um, you know, there were a, a lot of uh, obstacles in the way for women to wrestle freestyle in the United States. I asked Rob Herman this question. Is there potential in the future for women to uh, wrestle in the uh, in the Greco style? He said yes. What's your opinion? I, mean, I, don't, I don't see why not. Um, you know, any, anything's possible. More opportunity for women, more growth for wrestling. I think that's a positive. Uh, we're yeah. starting to see wrestling grow, and in some areas, specifically women's wrestling, we're starting to see women's wrestling and wrestling as a whole grow again, and uh, it's a healthy growth right now. It's uh, it's planned. We're seeing men's and women's programs added at universities. We're also seeing Greco programs at the club level being added to uh, colleges and universities through the National College Wrestling Association and USA Wrestling in that partnership. What's your take on the, uh, on the idea of having club – uh, Greco club programs at colleges and universities. Um, definitely excited. I think anytime we can get more athletes wrestling Greco and focusing on that, that style, the better it's going to be. We need, you know, a lot more depth and, and competitive atmosphere here in the, in the U S. So the more uh, people we can get involved, uh, the better. Andy, I always give everybody a chance for a shout out, especially guys that, you know, have been along, uh, along the trail. It's never one that you travel alone from Chaska, Minnesota to where you are now at Marquette, Michigan. Uh, you've traveled the world on behalf of the United States. We've been proud to have you as one of our greatest competitors. Who would you like to recognize for being a part of your career? Um, I've always been, you know, very thankful for the Minnesota storm and for having that, that club support me throughout my whole career from, from when I was a freshman here, you know, 13 years ago, all the way to, to Rio. So they've been able to support me and, you know, help me get to whatever I need to, um, the whole time. So I've been very thankful for them. Has there ever been a t-shirt with just a mustache on it? Yeah. There has been? And I don't have one. <laughs> I'm sorry. <Yeah. laughs> Got a t-shirt the other day from Jacob Casper from Duke University. The, yeah. Uh, the heavyweight there. And it was a picture of Casper the ghost with headgear and a Duke wrestling singlet on. And it says, Team Casper Wrestling. And I went, now that's pretty cool. We yeah, gotta, that we, we got to do more to market the mustache. I, 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 that's a go-to for me every time we talk. But you know, it also is a go-to for me. I got to recognize you as the new assistant coach of the uh, Marquette-based 
program. And I'll tell you what, they are much stronger now for having you as an addition to uh, to Rob Herman's staff. And Rob said it best. He said, I don't look at him as, as an assistant. I look at him at a guy, I look at him as a guy that we have similar, similar goals and uh, uh, bring what we can to the room. And you've got 50 plus kids coming, man. I tell you what, that's going to be a full, full room at Northern Michigan University. Congratulations on all your success, coach. And we appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. I surely hope I get to see you compete one more time. All right. Yeah, we'll see. Guest Thank on the you. Nike Hot Seat today. And man, it's a good guest indeed. Andy Bisick has been our guest from the U.S. Olympic training site at Northern Michigan University in Marquette. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown. Thanks for watching.